everybody, my name is Wayne Overstreet. I'm originally from Baltimore, been in Atlanta since the 80s. Yeah, be more careful, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I've been here since the population sign on Peachtree said 840,000. Now it's like six million. So I, I've seen it all. Uh, been in this business 25 years. I'm um, the co-CEO and chairman of Go Media Productions. We do everything from concept to post. Uh, I was in the post business for 15 years before I evolved into executive producing film. For years, I was known as the black guy in post because in 99, 2000, there were no brothers in post. And uh, post is the editorial process. So after a film is shot, you bring it to post, you know. Pre-production is when you prepare, production is when you shoot, post-production is the finishing process. And not many of us knew that process. I actually started producing film because people would get to post and have run out of money. And I saw an opportunity there to invest in their film by offering post services as my investment. And from there I began to executive produce films. And then during the pandemic, when we couldn't shoot films, I realized there was a need for distribution of films. So we became a distribution company. Now we've got probably 30 titles in the market. We've executive produced seven or eight films, feature films, since 2019. And uh, we currently have a, a show on Aspire called Six Minutes to Glory, which is an HBC Battle of the Band show. We've got a cooking show, Twisted Dish on Aspire. We've got 50 episodes of that where we put a twist on traditional dishes, but we've got multiple films in, in the marketplace, executive produced Donnie Simpson video, Soul, brought Donnie Simpson back to TV, and, and he's a legend, and you know, it's kind of crazy that it took me and, and, and some other guys to really get behind Donnie and bring him back to the marketplace. Um, you know, David Letterman gets a show on Netflix, but Donnie, we had to struggle to get them to realize that there's a market and an audience for Donnie, who would, as Bob Johnson from BET said, without Video Soul, there's no BET, and without Donnie Simpson, there's no Video Soul. My name is Professor Alvin Daniels, out of Chicago, Illinois. I shoot documentaries. Did a couple of 30 for 30s, got some stuff on Tubi. I do what I do, thank you. My name is Jason C. Lauder. I'm also a native of ATL, native of Atlanta. I'm an AT alien, um, and I am a creative vessel. Uh, I'm a storyteller uh, that, that, that breaks branches off into storytelling and acting. I'm also a teacher, a mentor, coach, um, and I'm a lover of life, and I want to be here as a servant. So I'm here to be of service to anybody who has any questions, any ideas, any thoughts, any, anything. I'm, I, I want to be a servant. I'm, 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 I, I, I love this. I love this. I truly do love it. You know what I mean? Me, yo, this is family. This is family. So we're amongst family, so we're going to talk as family. Peace and blessings. So, for my educated gangsters, that's Adamsville. And for my freedom fighters, that's West End. You know what I'm saying? So all that I am, as Abraham Lincoln once said, all that I am, all that I ever will become, I owe to my mother, Miss Gwendolyn Lewis. So in the spirit of her, I say ashe to Ms. Gwendolyn Lewis. So as we journey into the cinematic world of Dr. Rick Mathis, let us observe the rich tapestry of experiences that have shaped and molded me into the person I am today. A child from Atlanta's west side, driven by carving my dreams and thoughts into the hearts of many. So today I wanna um, really share with you all like some nuggets on how to make money in the film industry. Right now the film industry is going through a transition where tech, AI, and things like that are really uh, transforming the way we do business, the way we create content. So what I wanna share later on is how to make six or seven figures right now in this industry. Put your hands together if you wanna make six, seven figures right now in this industry. So that's what I'll be sharing. There's some things uh, that are coming up with AI and with drones right now that you can easily plug into and make that type of money. So, thank you. Good evening, gentlemen. I just want to say I am honored to be amongst all of you. Um, I'm Robert Slocum. I'm from the west side of Atlanta, Adamsville to be exact. Um, I'm a 
best-selling author, um, award-winning screenwriter, actor, director, and producer. Um, I really just, anything you want to know and I can help with, that's what I'm here for. And I really want you guys' involvement. I started a nonprofit, Shoot Films, Not People. And I can use, the, I need the community, because it's for the community. Thank you. Lonnie Smith, uh, from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, came down to Atlanta in 2008. Um, so Soldier Boy was popping in for anybody. That was my era of like music and stuff, TI and like that. So um, went to Morehouse, uh, graduated uh, 13. Um, started in social media and then transitioned into filmmaking. I still do both um, for sure, but um, completed my first two films um, that were intended to be films. I got three other projects on Tubi already and um, we got the posters be behind us and we, we decided to do something different. It's a sci-fi action um, type of movie, bl all black cast um, and uh, produced it with my brother Kale here. But um, yeah, uh, that's me in a nutshell, producer, director, writer. Um, acting only because I got to. Um, Fenarios, maybe y'all have heard of it, do comedy skits online and stuff like that. So um, I just got back from Cannes Film Festival and I'm here to tell y'all that like we got to think way bigger than just America. Like way bigger. Like I seen it. I, I, I went to the promised land, y'all. Like I seen it and like we have to think bigger. Um, and, and towards the future and, and everybody in this room, we have the power to do that together. So. Um, Welcome, and uh, it's good to see all of y'all black brothers. Hi, my name is Kenneth. How y'all doing, brothers? Yeah. <clears throat> I've, I've been an actor and a model. I've been an actor since I was three. No, I've been a model since I was three. I stopped when I was around five, I believe. <laughs> uh, um, <clears throat> I started acting uh, when, I stopped, when I stopped doing modeling. <clears throat> I've been looking for, <clears throat> I've been looking for different uh, movies. Like last movie I was in, they had to take it down because of the pandemic. It was right in between the pandemic coming, and so I forgot what that movie was called. It was about, a, <laughs> it was about a little uh, boy, aka me, and it was this monster under my bed, and. Um, I was memorizing everybody's line. I was memorizing my mom's line and mine's. So we practiced that and then the pandemic came. I've been in a lot of different commercials after that. No more, no movies. I've been looking for movies, but nobody has, uh, I guess. Oh, seen. You're in the right place, yeah. Good job. yeah, so I've been in different commercials and yeah, just trying to start young. I run a company called Cold Turkey Management. Um, I got in, I have a music background, but I got into film in 2019 when a buddy from uh, my music background became president of a film studio. And uh, he asked me to help him cast a film. It was called uh, Super Turn in uh, 2019. And uh, being on set just really inspired me. So exposure is so important for us. Uh, I was on set with them, and once I was there, I said, you know what, I gotta figure out this film stuff. I like the way it works. Um, I like the way you can tell stories. Uh, fast forward, we executive produced two films last year with my uh, co-producer, Lonnie, from Fenarios, and uh, I'm a line producer on a kid's show right now, um, a popular YouTube kid's show. So, oh man, we handle everything from uh, setting up the company um, to dealing with uh, vendors, to overlooking contracts. Um, yeah, we do a lot of stuff. That's like the, the pre-production stuff. Um, run, manage the set daily, be there during uh, production, and then also manage post-production, like the gentleman mentioned before. Uh, so yeah, we have our hands on every part of it and make sure everything goes smooth and everything stays in line. With my management background, it's kind of easy for me because it's just management in the film industry. So that's what I do now on the kids' show. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to be here. I want to say we came here last year when they had a film panel, and I was in the middle of a shooting. So we ran here for information. And the things that brothers told us helped us so much during this process. And uh, when I saw that flyer, I said, we got to come back, kind of share what happened since then. But when we came here last year, we didn't know much. And you guys really helped us. 
And, uh, you know, we're done now. The movie's done. We got a premiere coming up this month. So we're excited. We're excited. Check, check, one, two. Peace and love to uh, all the brothers on location. I want to say thank you to the Black Man's Lab for allowing me to be on this panel and my brother C.A., the artist, for giving me that opportunity to uh, be here and be amongst this black excellence today. Uh, my name is Ascari. I'm a uh, Los Angeles native, and uh, I started off in the entertainment industry in 1991. Um, I started off doing uh, background work and then stand-in work and then also, you know, getting day players race and stuff like that. I joined the uh, AFTRA union in uh, 1991 working on The Living Color alongside of uh, Jamie Foxx and uh, working with Michelle Pfeiffer on Dangerous Minds. I was able to join the Screen Actors Guild, which I'm still to this day a car carrying member. Um, fast forward, um, I got into the music industry and uh, was dealing with people like Ice T, shout out to Ice T, my mentor with that. Uh, my mother, who was a writer, uh, back in the day, she wrote for, you know, that girl and was engaged at the time to uh, Eric Monty. They were my original mentors. Eric Monty, who, those who don't know, created Cooley High and Good Times. He was also the pioneer who created, conceptualized the concepts for George and Jeezy uh, Jefferson on the Jefferson Show, as well as Sanford and Son, and a slew of other things. So that, these are my original mentors in film. Um, when I was doing music, there were guys that I was going to, you know, videographers and stuff I was, would pay and they were kind of scared to pull up because of the type of music we were dealing, doing at that time, reality rap. So I picked up a camera, which I didn't realize was in my DNA because my mother was in film school when she was pregnant with me. So it was kind of one of those things where it was like divine intervention. I picked up a Panasonic a little low grade Panasonic, graduate to a 720 HD, to a 1080p HD, 4K, 6K on up, and uh, I'm currently a uh, filmmaker, indie filmmaker. Um, I'm a cinematographer, videographer, and photographer by trade, and uh, I do a lot of videographer work in Atlanta, and I'm currently uh, shopping a film, uh, a deal for the Shorty Low biopic film, uh, as well as series. So that's where we at right now. Appreciate Thank you, brother. You. Has allowed y'all to do some expansion. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, it's, it's public knowledge, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I just want, you know. It, it kind of got affected by the pandemic. Yeah. But we did, um, it was public that we had received a $150 million investment or deal to, to bring post-production to the state of Georgia. Um, long story short, a third, of a, a film's budget is post-production. Now, if they do nine billion in film in the state of Georgia, that means three billion left because the posts go back to LA. You know, posts is, we got a lot of capable folks, but a lot of stuff go back to Warner Studios or go to Lucas Studios. Uh, so it all starts, that's why we got into film finance because he who writes the check dictates where the post is done. So if if you fund it here and you hire a director here, then the director doesn't want to go home to LA to do his post. You know, the production might take, you know, anywhere from 10 days to, you know, 40 days, but the post is going to take months. And so that's really the sustainable income, the sustainable revenue for the state. That's when we're not a location, that's when we're not affected by is the tax credit going to leave? You know, because if the tax credit leaves, then our location, which we essentially are, isn't as attractive. So if we do the post-production, if we do the whole process, then we are truly filmmakers and truly a filmmaking town. And Atlanta can actually, we have the infrastructure, unlike Louisiana, North Carolina, New Mexico, other places where they shoot, we got the world's busiest airport, we got 10 major universities, we've got 100,000 people a year that come here. So it's constantly being, the workforce is being replenished. And, um, you know, a lot of people here are qualified to fulfill those jobs. And that's why Atlanta really is a potential threat to New York and LA. Do they kind of blacklist or for the writers or anything, do they try to like blackball the scripts that where it's just a peaceful lifestyle, a peaceful family type script or a nice movie where it's just 
everything mellow, yellow, like how the white people got, like a Disney Channel movie or something like that? Is that something y'all see? Internet changed. Tell your story. Put it on the internet. You ain't got to worry about nothing else. And Wilson, yeah, yeah, I was a producer on that. And uh, God is beyond good, man. During the pandemic, I have a series called Preacher's Kids. Hmm. During the pandemic, Michael Jordan came out with uh, his documentary. What's the name of it? In the Sun Times, the very day that he did his, they had a full page on him. My Preacher's Kids came out on Amazon. Now think about that. You got Jordan on this page. You got Preacher's Kids on this page. That changed my whole career. So again, create your own story. Start what you have in your hands. I'm a preacher's kid. That's what I started with. The dynamics have changed with their Tubi, with the internet, with YouTube and all that. You can create your own story and get it out there. But I also don't want people to get in that set mind because that's also a kill off when they tell us these are our stories. Um, Frank Lucas, Frank Matthews, um, these are our stories. Like when you hear they say New Jack City or Minister Society, these, these stories change people's lives. And it also gave people an in-depth of our reality. So people will shun us and say, oh, that's all they do, or, you know, that's their life. But in the same token, they'll call the Godfather. Um, the Irishman, The Departed, all those are considered classics. So, so please, let's, ch let's change that narrative because those are some great stories. We have great stories. We have more than that to tell. And they do try and keep us at bay and they'll tell us, oh, no, your people don't like sci-fi. The statistics show you don't do fantasy. It's BS. We're, we're, we're working to change that narrative. Yes, sir. My right. brother, my brother Jason and I, we were just on set for a fantasy project, and it's gonna be great. Yes, sir. F Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> All of those stories are our stories, whether it's a hood story or not. There are stories too. I think the problem is that we like a lot of different things, and I think the problem is there are more stories to tell as well. Peace, brothers. Thank you for coming out. I want to ask for. Anybody who wants to be able to go ahead and move forward and start in the film industry, how do you know what's gonna be the best avenue and direction for you to be able to go into and start? You're at the frontier of a whole new shift, right? I teach AI, and it is said that AI is gonna take people's jobs. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's not AI that's taking people's jobs, it's the people that are learning AI that's gonna take people's jobs. So there'll be 85 million jobs deleted by AI, but then there's going to be 97, job, 97 million jobs created as a result of AI. So the way that you should be thinking now as a creative going into this, study AI and see how you can merge AI with filmmaking. There was a documentary that was just created recently on Netflix dealing with mammoths. The whole documentary was done using AI. So I'm going to just sit there right there, the whole documentary. That's the way filmmaking and storytelling is being done right now. Tyler Perry just stopped an $800 million expansion on his studio as a result of seeing an uh, a, 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 uh, exhibit or, a, or a, a tutorial on how AI is creating film. So that's, that's what I would suggest as well. Definitely learn it, don't run from it. You know, a lot of people are afraid of it. Embrace it because it's here. It's going to be here. But what I would offer to you is get on set however you can. Volunteer, volunteer your time, and learn and see the different positions and then figure out what resonates with you, what you like. But make yourself available. Make yourself useful. I've told people this, seen them get on set and say, just be willing to do anything and everything and show that that, you know, don't be disgruntled, don't get with the murmurs and complainers, they ain't paying enough, they ain't feed us right. Get away from them people because it's a blessing to be there. You, yeah. you Like the old people say, you ain't out digging ditches, right? You literally are creating content and making movies. So get on set, volunteer your time, learn different positions and make yourself valuable and, and really, you know, that's the way. And then you can figure out what you want to do.
My question for the panel is, uh, how would you decide how to choose, like, the staff, not the staff, the, the people who are going to be in your film? The cast, yes. Typically, there's a, there's a screenplay, and they have a storyboard, and they pretty much know what characters they want, the character types. So, for example, when you had uh, the Nutty Professor, like, they knew, even though Eddie Murphy played multiple roles, they knew what kind of character types they wanted for that film. So, of course, when they had um, uh, Janet Jackson play a character, you know, Jada Pinkett play a character, they knew what kind of character type that they were looking for. So when it comes to casting, you know, most of the times the writers, the producers, they already know who they're looking for. So when they have casting calls, they know what kind of types to put out there, you know, the fillers for people out there. Um, and as far as the crew is concerned, because we deal with that as well, when it comes to the crew, what I noticed when I was doing on the other side of the camera, in front of the camera, shall I say, when I was on Warner Brothers and Paramount and Sony and all those you know, major uh, film uh, studios, I would see crew members that would take a long, long time, extremely long time to set up shops. You know, and I used to be like, until I learned about them milking the clock. Once I, once I learned that they were doing that, I, I wanted to figure out a way to um, scale things down and you know, with those big Panavision cameras that they had in those days. But um, I wanted to kind of scale things down and have a better proficient way of doing things. So I kind of like gauge who I would hire with my own work ethic, if that makes sense. If you're looking into getting into casting, follow, study the other, study other casting directors. That's, that's with any, that's with any skills, any, anything in the industry, study the people who are already doing it. So we got some dope casting directors here in Atlanta. We got George Pierre, who's been on this panel before. We got, um, 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 uh, uh, Erica Arvo, we got several casting directors. Also, there's a website called Actors Access. Build you an actor, create an Actors Access account, and then you'll see all the breakdowns, breakdowns of what you see for, they're looking for um, someone who, a black man um, uh, with uh, brown eyes, whatever, whatever. It, it, it'll give you a breakdown of what they're looking for as far as the characters are concerned. So study, study the people who are already doing it and create you an Actors Access account so you can see what, those, what the breakdowns look like and what it means to, to submit yourself uh, forecasting, but definitely a great question. And your last three recent projects. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. So recently, um, most recently, we, I'm on BMF um, season season three, um, and uh, which was a blessing, man. That was a, truly a blessing. Salute. Um, yeah, man, beautiful. The family, that black mafia family, that, fam that, that family meant something. Like that, that family, that's what we had on set. Um, also, um, I did Wu Tang and American Saga, which is what you had, which is on Hulu. So. For the culture, for the culture, and then um, another cup for the culture, Black Lightning, Black Lightning. So that was, yeah, man. So it's been a blessing. Salute. And he taught, he taught, he taught our children at M Hotel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I shake. just want y'all to understand, man. Mm. Like you get wherever you need to yes. when you when you root it right. Yeah. Brother has moved in the right spirit, but mm. Parham has to be a witness. They fought together. I shake. When you move in the right spirit, doors will open. Can you break down the myth that I, I'm not down in the education, but how necessary is it just to follow your idea to create? And the one thing that I used to see uh, when it came to my mother, who's one of the most creative uh, writers I've ever known, is that she used to submit the screenplays and stuff to these different film studios. And I was there when those rejection letters would come. And I would see the look of disappointment on her face. And one thing I used to always wonder was, you know, why don't you, you know, produce your own film? Instead of just trying to shop your project, why don't you just produce your project? And I believe that part of that reason is some of us, we, we don't have mentors, some of us don't have just that divine idea within us to, to manifest it in real time. Like when I picked up a camera, there were people that I knew that went to film school as well. And they knew about textbook theory, but not application. I got my feet wet, I paid for cameras, all my equipment I bought myself. 
It wasn't no bank loan. It wasn't no grant. It was nothing. I paid for it myself. Every piece of equipment I have to this day, I bought. And I decided to take the initiative to put my best foot forward and just get out there and make it happen. Don't make excuses. Just make it happen. However you got to do. And to the, the up, up and coming filmmakers that, that are here um, and aspiring, I'm going to say that learn about business credit. Get your personal credit together. Get your business credit together. Learn about crowdfunding and produce your own film, your own project. So I say this real quick. One of the things that white people do is they create um, certifications and things like that as places or blockages to stop you from getting opportunities. Don't be afraid to get these certifications, right? Right now, there's an opportunity with drones that's on the horizon. Amazon, Walmart, FedEx is going to be delivering packages right to your doorstep using drones. There's something called a Part 107. That's your drone certification. Write that down. Part 107, drone certification. You can immediately take the test. I'm about to take the test on Thursday just so I can help black people go through the process and scale. But you can take this test and start making six figures like that. I'm telling you the opportunities are there. When I went through the study class, I was the only black guy in there. You know what I'm saying? So don't be afraid to take these certifications. Part 107. Real quick, guys, I just want to take this moment because I don't think we give you guys y'all roses enough. Um, I think, Brother Miley, you probably think we met first with me coming here, but that's not the case. Uh, we met 13 years ago. I had just got released from jail and I was doing a security job, and you just saw, like, my spirits was down, and you spoke life into me. Like, I, I got locked up trying to raise money for my first film, mm. and all I knew how to get quick money back then was in the streets. Mm. So when Brother Miley spoke that life into me, it, it woke me up, and I started back on this process and I have I've had my company for 12 years now Eyes Glue Productions I just want to thank you and I still have that Davis Bozeman card that you gave me that day on my nightstand so I love you brother love you too thank you love you too brother. thank you Mark appreciate you appreciate you all right all right, everybody, everybody link, link up, up, man. Normally Marty, normally Marty does this, man. I'm gonna do it today because I got something to say, man. Everybody link, everybody link up across the, across the front. All the young brothers, man. My wife got um, honored this weekend, man, and uh, she was a distinguished alumni for Florida a and And Marty pulled up with his fiance. They came all the way down to Tampa, man. And I just want you all to know what brotherhood looks like, man. So I just wanted to lift that up. Um, let's keep being uh, our brother's keepers and keep showing each, uh, each other love. Because yeah. that's what we need more than anything is to love on each other. So with that, I'm a link in this chain. I'm a link in this chain. And it won't break here. And it won't break here. I'm a link in this chain. I'm a link in this chain. And it won't break here. And it won't break here. We are links in this chain. We are links in this chain. And we won't break here. And we won't break here. I say. I say.